people ask me about uh, Sir Alec Guinness, I guess the two most often questions are Sir Alec and the robots. And there's a wonderful story that kind of tells you about both of them. There was many, many dwarves in the film and midgets to play little Jawas, little creatures. Right. And there was one who in real life was not an actor, he's a comedian. He's a stand-up comic in Music Hall, which is like vaudeville over there. Right. And he's a spritz comic, he's an insult comedian, he's like a waist-high Don Rickles. And, ah, seriously, he was always, he would just insult you, you could never deal with the guy because you couldn't get a joke in, he was just too funny. And he, and it, an example, one of his running gags was, he th felt that it was uh, an insult that he didn't get a chair with his name on it and all the actors in the film did. So he found this rock in the Sahara Desert, this big flat rock, and he took a piece of adhesive tape and put his name in indelible ink and he carried this rock <laughs> every location we went on in Africa before the truck could even unload our chairs. While we were still, he would already be there with an umbrella, a little lemonade, some sunglasses, <laughs> and sun oil, say, oh, did your truck bro break down or what? So, uh, we Guinness were, is wonderful. Though. Well, that's it. We went yeah. one night to dinner with, with Sir Alec and he's very reserved, kind of shy at first, but he has a sense of humor that really comes out and he helped me get this guy. Because Tony Daniels, who played 3PO, said, tell Sir Alec what he told you. And I said, oh, yeah. Uh, Jack, who normally is always on, finally got serious one time. And he said, you know, I do joke a lot, but the truth of the matter is I am so in awe of Sir Alec Guinness. And I don't know what to say, because when I was a kid in London, I would go all over town on the bus to try and see one of his films. And I said, well, gee, didn't you meet him when we got on the charter airplane? And very seriously, he said, oh, yeah, he's a tremendous guy. When I got on the plane, he spoke to me straight away. He said, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you little, I'm going to get you. And we told Guinness this. Now, Guinness chuckled, and he sort of stroked his beard. And we were in a big dining hall, and, and Jack, this little dwarf, was over holding court, big laughs at the dinner table. And Guinness leaned over to me and said, which small person is he? And I said, see that guy over my right shoulder? Now, fade out. Two weeks later, we're in the desert again. We're, or it's, it's complete open wilderness. You, everywhere you can look, you can walk with your eyes closed and never fall down. And Jack is sitting on his rock reading his book. And Guinness started very slowly walking towards Jack. And I said, this is it. This is the day. And I kind of watched from the side. Guinness had the hood on, like that big sorcerer's hood. And he's really ominous looking. And he kept getting closer to Jack and closer to Jack. And Jack started, like, looking around and thinking, well, I'd better say something. So he was halfway off his rock to say hello. And Guinness pulled the hood back and said, get out of my way! Get out! And Jack, the blood dropped from his face. And he was shaking. He just looked all around because you could go anywhere and not bump into him. <laughs> well, that... He, Jack, Jack said to me, I have to hand it to you, when you play a practical joke, you get the best talented people in England. That's fine. You can do the sequel too, I understand, right? Yeah.